Did you know that a group of penguins is called a huddle? We just had a lunch huddle here. I'm with Deidre Hudson. We just talked about ways that CMOs can drive recession-busting ideas through their organization. So Deidre, give me one tip for cutting through in a recession. My one tip is to narrow down your addressable market that you're focusing on. Really be creative with using signals that people are dropping and being very creative with using intense signals and figuring out who is actually demonstrating desire for your product or service and hone in on and narrow in on those people. Now, I love it because we probably have a smaller budget because the economy is down, so therefore we have to reach fewer people, but we have to get the right people in the funnel. Okay. Thank you, Deidre. Margaret Malloy from Siegel & Gale. Margaret, what is your recession-busting tip? My recession-busting tip is focus on thought leadership, and that requires two components. Have an original thought and be a leader. And I love that, but so let's be a little more specific because we all know we've been talking about AI and we can crank out a lot of content, but that's not the solution, is it? Certainly not. I mean, from my perspective, it's around simplifying. And it's about really getting to the essence of what matters now for your prospective customer. And if you have that insight, you can articulate that in a thought leading way. But without that insight, you're just contributing to the drivel of content that is out there. Exactly. So we have a thought, we have a leader. It's all about having your own original IP. It's okay to use the tools, but if you don't have something original, don't bother saying it. Okay. The great tip. Thank you, Margaret. Okay. Lori Klump from Q4. Yes. Lori, what's your tip? My tip is in a recessionary environment to leverage your relationships with your partners. If you're planning events or trying to do outreach, leverage those partner relationships. They come in not only to support you from a budget perspective, but from a content perspective as well. So what you're really doing is you're stretching the dollars because you're sharing audiences and you're sharing budgets and they're just making it more efficient. That's exactly it. And they're sharing their knowledge and thought leadership in your industry with your users and your clients and prospects. I love it. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Okay, Jan Deal, Drake Star, what's your tip? Uh, flip the funnel on its head. Start with the end in mind. Winning, driving revenue. Work backwards from there. What are the real important things you need to do to do that? And then cut a lot of the noise. So when we're flipping the funnel, you're talking about the few opportunities that you have, making sure that you close. Just starting with the end in mind, not broad awareness to MQL. Start with where are we going to win? How are we going to win clients, drive revenue, and then look at that and work backwards. All right. Well, I, one of the interesting things on all of this so far, it's been we're looking for economies. We're maybe narrowing our target at least to try to get as many swings as we can uh, against the folks that are actually buying. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. Okay, Katrina Clear from Sage. Katrina, what is your tip? My tip is to make AI an extension of your team. So use AI so you can be more efficient, you can be faster to respond to your customers, and you can be more personalized. And I think that's going to win in a really crowded marketplace. So it's uh, that's about speed, but how do we make sure the quality is good when we're using these AI tools? Well, that's why you don't want to delegate to the AI tool. You want to make it part of the team so that there's still oversight. So think of who is your manager of your AI resources? Who is that person that just like you'd monitor anybody else's work, you know, your junior marketing manager, you're still going to read over their stuff. You're still going to double check things and you need to do that for your AI produced items as well. No differently than you would if a human had done it. All right. So, but if we have that kind of efficiency using the AI, tool, I, we may have be able to get by with a smaller team. Possibly, yeah. You know, you can take some of the grunt work off your team that they really hate to do and that wears them down in an already rough economy. So, like, delegate all that stuff over to the AI. Keep on top of it to make sure that you can clean your data, you can write certain things, you can personalize things, summarize stuff. A lot of those administrative tasks, like, and then free up creative time for your team because that's what they would really rather do anyway. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Katrina. Okay. <laughs> Peter Weingart, Whippo, Peter. I'm going to say... I'm going to be a little contrarian. Don't forget the top of the funnel. You know, most of your customers are not in market at any given time. And if we only focus the bottom, well, we're getting a lot of more swings at, at that particular inning, but there are other innings in the game and we're going to miss out in the future. Well, and I think that's such an important concept right now because there are just fewer opportunities out there. But in a year from now, if you've consistently invested in your business, if you've consistently uh, invested in broadening awareness and in, in the reach of your brand and in appreciation for your brand, then in theory, you're going to have a lot more swings and a lot more wins when the recession's over. There are all kinds of stats that show that most of the sales process happens before anybody asks you for that RFP. 
and I think we're missing out on a lot of those opportunities because we're only focused on the inbound request. Right, so w this is the move from just thinking about demand capture to really thinking about demand creation and what marketers really want to do all along anyway. Build demand, create demand. Create demand. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're a B2B CMO who can share, care, and dare with the best of them, do yourself a favor. You don't need to get one of these hats, but join a huddle. Check out cmohuddles.com. I'm Drew Neiser. That's your Tuesday tip. Peace out.